last modified on February 21, 2015, at 8.03. Science. This article is about the general term. For other uses, see science, disambiguation. The scale of the universe mapped to the branches of science and the hierarchy of science. Science, from Latin science and TIA, meaning knowledge, is a systematic enterprise that builds and organizes knowledge in the form of testable explanations and predictions about nature and the universe. This knowledge is determined through the scientific method by experiments and observations, and may take the form of scientific facts, scientific models, or scientific theories. In an older and closely related meaning, science also refers to a body of knowledge itself, of the type that can be rationally explained and reliably applied. Ever since classical antiquity, science as a type of knowledge has been closely linked to philosophy. In the West during the early modern period the words science and philosophy of nature were sometimes used interchangeably p.3 and until the 19th century natural philosophy, which is today called natural science, was considered a separate branch of philosophy. In modern usage, science most often refers to a way of pursuing knowledge, not only the knowledge itself. It is also often restricted to those branches of study that seek to explain the phenomena of the material universe. In the 17th and 18th centuries scientists increasingly sought to formulate knowledge in terms of laws of nature. Over the course of the 19th century, the word science became increasingly associated with the scientific method itself, as a disciplined way to study the natural world, including physics, chemistry, geology, and biology. It is in the 19th century also that the term scientist began to be applied to those who sought knowledge and understanding of nature. However, science has also continued to be used in a broad sense to denote reliable and teachable knowledge about a topic, as reflected in modern terms like library science or computer science. This is also reflected in the names of some areas of academic study such as social science and political science. History Main Articles History of Science, History of the Earth and Evolution An animation showing the movement of the continents from the separation of Pangaea until the present day. Science in a broad sense existed before the modern era, and in many historical civilizations. Modern science is distinct in its approach and successful in its results, modern science now defines what science is in the strictest sense of the term. Much earlier than the modern era, Another important turning point was the development of classical natural philosophy in the ancient Greek-speaking world. Pre-philosophical Science in its original sense is a word for a type of knowledge, Latin science and TIA, ancient Greek epistem, rather than a specialized word for the pursuit of such knowledge. In particular it is one of the types of knowledge which people can communicate to each other and share. For example, knowledge about the working of natural things was gathered long before recorded history and led to the development of complex abstract thinking. This is shown by the construction of complex calendars, techniques for making poisonous plants edible, and buildings such as the pyramids. However no consistent conscientious distinction was made between knowledge of such things which are true in every community and other types of communal knowledge, such as mythologies and legal systems. Philosophical study of nature. See also, nature, philosophy. Maize, known in some English speaking countries as corn, is a large grain plant domesticated by indigenous peoples in Mesoamerica in prehistoric times. Before the invention or discovery of the concept of nature, ancient Greek phuses, by the pre Socratic philosophers, the same words tend to be used to describe the natural way in which a plant grows, and the way in which, for example, one tribe worships a particular god. For this reason it is claimed these men were the first philosophers in the strict sense, and also the first people to clearly distinguish nature and convention. Science was therefore distinguished as the knowledge of nature, and the things which are true for every community, and the name of the specialized pursuit of such knowledge was philosophy the realm of the first philosopher physicists. They were mainly speculators or theorists, particularly interested in astronomy. In contrast, trying to use knowledge of nature to imitate nature, artifice or technology, Greek techn, 
was seen by classical scientists as a more appropriate interest for lower class artisans. Philosophical Turn to Human Things A major turning point in the history of early philosophical science was the controversial but successful attempt by Socrates to apply philosophy to the study of human things, including human nature, the nature of political communities, and human knowledge itself. He criticized the older type of study of physics as too purely speculative, and lacking in self-criticism. He was particularly concerned that some of the early physicists treated nature as if it could be assumed that it had no intelligent order, explaining things merely in terms of motion and matter. The study of human things had been the realm of mythology and tradition, and Socrates was executed. Aristotle later created a less controversial systematic program of Socratic philosophy, which was teleological, and human-centered. He rejected many of the conclusions of earlier scientists. For example in his physics the sun goes around the earth, and many things have it as part of their nature that they are for humans. Each thing has a formal cause and final cause and a role in the rational cosmic order. Motion and change is described as the actualization of potentials already in things, according to what types of things they are. While the Socratics insisted that philosophy should be used to consider the practical question of the best way to live for a human being, a study Aristotle divided into ethics and political philosophy, they did not argue for any other types of applied science. Aristotle maintained the sharp distinction between science and the practical knowledge of artisans, treating theoretical speculation as the highest type of human activity, practical thinking about good living as something less lofty, and the knowledge of artisans as something only suitable for the lower classes. In contrast to modern science, Aristotle's influential emphasis was upon the theoretical steps of deducing universal rules from raw data, and did not treat the gathering of experience and raw data as part of science itself. Medieval Science De Potentius Anime Sensitive, Gregor Reich, 1504, Margarita Philosophica Medieval science mood at a ventricle of the brain as the location for our common sense, where the forms from our sensory systems commingled. Ibn al-Haytham's approach was essentially hypothetico-deductive. During late antiquity and the early Middle Ages, the Aristotelian approach to inquiries on natural phenomena was used. Some ancient knowledge was lost, or in some cases kept in obscurity, during the fall of the Roman Empire and periodic political struggles. However, the general fields of science, or natural philosophy as it was called, and much of the general knowledge from the ancient world remained preserved though the works of the early Latin encyclopedists like Isidore of Seville. Also, in the Byzantine Empire, Many Greek science texts were preserved in Syriac translations done by groups such as Nestorians and Monophysites. Many of these were translated later on into Arabic under the Caliphate, during which many types of classical learning were preserved and in some cases improved upon. The House of Wisdom was established in Abbasid era Baghdad, Iraq. It is considered to have been a major intellectual center, during the Islamic Golden Age, where Muslim scholars such as Al-Kindi and Ibn Sal in Baghdad, and Ibn al-Haytham in Cairo, flourished from the 9th to the 13th centuries, until the Mongol sack of Baghdad. Ibn al-Haytham, known later to the West as al-Hazan, furthered the Aristotelian viewpoint, by emphasizing experimental data and the reproducibility of its results. In the later medieval period, as demand for translations grew, for example from the Toledo School of Translators, Western Europeans began collecting texts written not only in Latin, but also Latin translations from Greek, Arabic, and Hebrew. The texts of Aristotle, Ptolemy, Euclid, preserved in the Houses of Wisdom, were sought amongst Catholic scholars. In Europe, Alhazen's De Aspectibus directly influenced Roger Bacon, 13th century, in England who argued for more experimental science, as demonstrated by Alhazen. By the late Middle Ages, a synthesis of Catholicism and Aristotelianism known as scholasticism was flourishing in Western Europe, which had become a new geographic center of science, but all aspects of scholasticism were criticized in the 15th and 16th centuries. Renaissance, and Early Modern Science Main Article, 
Scientific Revolution. Galen, 129 c.216, noted the optic chiasm is X-shaped. Engraving from Vesalius, 1543. Front page of the 1572 Latin Optici Thesaurus, Optics Treasury, which included Alhazen's Book of Optics, showing propagation of light, rainbows, parabolic mirrors, distorted images caused by refraction in water, and perspective. Medieval science carried on the views of the Hellenist civilization of Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, as shown by Alhazen's Lost Work A book in which I have summarized the science of optics from the two books of Euclid and Ptolemy, to which I have added the notions of the first discourse which is missing from Ptolemy's book from Ibn Abi Eusebius catalog, as cited in, Smith 2001.91, Vol.1, P.15 Alhazen conclusively disproved Ptolemy's theory of vision. Durer's use of optics, 1525. But Alhassan retained Aristotle's ontology, Roger Bacon, Whitelow, and John Peckham each built up a scholastic ontology upon Alhazen's Book of Optics, a causal chain beginning with sensation, perception, and finally apperception of the individual and universal forms of Aristotle. This model of vision became known as perspectivism, which was exploited and studied by the artists of the Renaissance. A. Mark Smith points out the perspectivist theory of vision is remarkably economical, reasonable, and coherent, which pivots on three of Aristotle's four causes, formal, material, and final. Although Alhassan knew that a scene imaged through an aperture is inverted, he argued that vision is about perception. This was overturned by Kepler, who modeled the eye with a water-filled glass sphere, with an aperture in front of it to model the entrance pupil. He found that all the light from a single point of the scene was imaged at a single point at the back of the glass sphere. The optical chain ends on the retina at the back of the eye and the image is inverted. Copernicus formulated a heliocentric model of the solar system unlike the geocentric model of Ptolemy's Almagest. Galileo is considered one of the fathers of modern science. Galileo made innovative use of experiment and mathematics. However his persecution began after Pope Urban VIII blessed Galileo to write about the Copernican system. Galileo had used arguments from the Pope and put them in the voice of the simpleton in the work Dialogue concerning the two chief world systems which caused great offense to him. In Northern Europe, the new technology of the printing press was widely used to publish many arguments including some that disagreed with church dogma. René Descartes and Francis Bacon published philosophical arguments in favor of a new type of non-Aristotelian science. Descartes argued that mathematics could be used in order to study nature, as Galileo had done, and Bacon emphasized the importance of experiment over contemplation. Bacon questioned the Aristotelian concepts of formal cause and final cause, and promoted the idea that science should study the laws of simple natures, such as heat, rather than assuming that there is any specific nature, or formal cause, of each complex type of thing. This new modern science began to see itself as describing laws of nature. This updated approach to studies in nature was seen as mechanisty Bacon also argued that science should aim for the first time at practical inventions for the improvement of all human life. Age of Enlightenment In the 17th and 18th centuries, the project of modernity, as had been promoted by Bacon and Descartes, led to rapid scientific advance and the successful development of a new type of natural science, mathematical, methodically experimental, and deliberately innovative. Newton and Leibniz succeeded in developing a new physics, now referred to as Newtonian physics, which could be confirmed by experiment and explained using mathematics. Leibniz also incorporated terms from Aristotelian physics, but now being used in a new non-teleological way, for example energy and potential, modern versions of Aristotelian energia and potentia. In the style of Bacon, he assumed that different types of things all work according to the same general laws of nature, with no special formal or final causes for each type of thing. It is during this period that the word science gradually became more commonly used to refer to a type of pursuit of a type of knowledge, especially knowledge of nature coming close in meaning to the old term natural philosophy. 19th century 
Charles Darwin in 1854, by then working towards publication of On the Origin of Species. Both John Herschel and William Wool systematized methodology, the latter coined the term scientist. When Charles Darwin published On the Origin of Species he established descent with modification as the prevailing evolutionary explanation of biological complexity. His theory of natural selection provided a natural explanation of how species originated, but this only gained wide acceptance a century later. John Dalton developed the idea of atoms. The laws of thermodynamics and the electromagnetic theory were also established in the 19th century, which raised new questions which could not easily be answered using Newton's framework. The phenomena that would allow the deconstruction of the atom were discovered in the last decade of the 19th century, the discovery of X-rays inspired the discovery of radioactivity. In the next year came the discovery of the first subatomic particle, the electron. Combustion and chemical reactions were studied by Michael Faraday and reported in his lectures before the Royal Institution, The Chemical History of a Candle, 1861. 20th Century and Beyond. A simulated event in the CMS detector of the Large Hadron Collider, featuring a possible appearance of the Higgs boson. Einstein's theory of relativity and the development of quantum mechanics led to the replacement of Newtonian physics with a new physics which contains two parts, that describe different types of events in nature. In the first half of the century the development of artificial fertilizer made possible global human population growth. At the same time, the structure of the atom and its nucleus was elucidated, leading to the release of atomic energy, nuclear power. In addition, the extensive use of scientific innovation, stimulated by the wars of this century, led to antibiotics and increased life expectancy, revolutions in transportation, automobiles and aircraft, and the development of ICBMs, a space race, and a nuclear arms race all giving a widespread public appreciation of the importance of modern science. Widespread use of integrated circuits in the last quarter of the 20th century, combined with communication satellites, led to a revolution in information technology, and the rise of the global internet and mobile computing, including smartphones. More recently, it has been argued that the ultimate purpose of science is to make sense of human beings and our nature for example in his book Consilience, E.O. Wilson said the human condition is the most important frontier of the natural sciences. Philosophy of Science Main Article, Philosophy of Science The following text needs to be harmonized with text in Philosophy of Science. Working scientists usually take for granted a set of basic assumptions that are needed to justify the scientific method, 1, that there is an objective reality shared by all rational observers, 2, that this objective reality is governed by natural laws, 3, that these laws can be discovered by means of systematic observation and experimentation. Philosophy of science seeks a deep understanding of what these underlying assumptions mean and whether they are valid. The belief that scientific theories should and do represent metaphysical reality is known as realism. It can be contrasted with anti-realism, the view that the success of science does not depend on it being accurate about unobservable entities such as electrons. One form of anti-realism is idealism, the belief that the mind or consciousness is the most basic essence, and that each mind generates its own reality. In an idealistic worldview, what is true for one mind need not be true for other minds. The Sand Reckoner is a work by Archimedes in which he sets out to determine an upper bound for the number of grains of sand that fit into the universe. In order to do this, he had to estimate the size of the universe according to the contemporary model, and invent a way to analyze extremely large numbers. There are different schools of thought in philosophy of science. The most popular position is empiricism, which holds that knowledge is created by a process involving observation and that scientific theories are the result of generalizations from such observations. Empiricism generally encompasses inductivism, a position that tries to explain the way general theories can be justified by the finite number of observations humans can make and hence the finite amount of empirical evidence available to confirm scientific theories. This is necessary because the number of predictions those theories make is infinite, 
which means that they cannot be known from the finite amount of evidence using deductive logic only. Many versions of empiricism exist, with the predominant ones being Bayesianism and the hypothetico-deductive method P236. Empiricism has stood in contrast to rationalism, the position originally associated with Descartes, which holds that knowledge is created by the human intellect, not by observation P20 critical rationalism is a contrasting 20th century approach to science, first defined by Austrian-British philosopher Karl Popper. Popper rejected the way that empiricism describes the connection between theory and observation. He claimed that theories are not generated by observation, but that observation is made in the light of theories and that the only way a theory can be affected by observation is when it comes in conflict with it pp637 popper proposed replacing verifiability with falsifiability as the landmark of scientific theories and replacing induction with falsification as the empirical method p68 popper further claimed that there is actually only one universal method not specific to science the negative method of criticism trial and error it covers all products of the human mind, including science, mathematics, philosophy, and art. Another approach, instrumentalism, colloquially termed shut up and calculate, emphasizes the utility of theories as instruments for explaining and predicting phenomena. It views scientific theories as black boxes with only their input, initial conditions, and output, predictions, being relevant. Consequences, theoretical entities, and logical structure are claimed to be something that should simply be ignored and that scientists shouldn't make a fuss about, see interpretations of quantum mechanics. Close to instrumentalism is constructive empiricism, according to which the main criterion for the success of a scientific theory is whether what it says about observable entities is true. Paul K. Feyerabend advanced the idea of epistemological anarchism, which holds that there are no useful and exception-free methodological rules governing the progress of science or the growth of knowledge, and that the idea that science can or should operate according to universal and fixed rules is unrealistic, pernicious, and detrimental to science itself. Feyerabend advocates treating science as an ideology alongside others such as religion, magic, and mythology, and considers the dominance of science in society authoritarian and unjustified. He also contended, along with Imre Lakatos, discussed that the demarcation problem of distinguishing science from pseudoscience on objective grounds is not possible and thus fatal to the notion of science running according to fixed, universal rules. Feyerabend also stated that science does not have evidence for its philosophical precepts, particularly the notion of uniformity of law and the uniformity of process across time and space. Finally, Another approach often cited in debates of scientific skepticism against controversial movements like scientific creationism, is methodological naturalism. Its main point is that a difference between natural and supernatural explanations should be made, and that science should be restricted methodologically to natural explanations. That the restriction is merely methodological, rather than ontological, means that science should not consider supernatural explanations itself, but should not claim them to be wrong either. Instead, supernatural explanations should be left a matter of personal belief outside the scope of science. Methodological naturalism maintains that proper science requires strict adherence to empirical study and independent verification as a process for properly developing and evaluating explanations for observable phenomena. The absence of these standards, arguments from authority, Biased observational studies and other common fallacies are frequently cited by supporters of methodological naturalism as characteristic of the non-science they criticize. Certainty and Science The DNA double helix is a molecule that encodes the genetic instructions used in the development and functioning of all known living organisms and many viruses. A scientific theory is empirical, and is always open to falsification if new evidence is presented. That is, no theory is ever considered strictly certain as science accepts the concept of fallibilism. The philosopher of science Karl Popper sharply distinguishes truth from certainty. He writes that scientific knowledge consists in the search for truth, but it is not the search for certainty. All human knowledge is fallible and therefore uncertain p4. 
new scientific knowledge rarely results in vast changes in our understanding. According to psychologist Keith Stanovich, it may be the media's overuse of words like breakthrough that leads the public to imagine that science is constantly proving everything it thought was true to be false 119-138 while there are such famous cases as the theory of relativity that required a complete reconceptualization, these are extreme exceptions. Knowledge in science is gained by a gradual synthesis of information from different experiments, by various researchers, across different branches of science, it is more like a climb than a leap 123 theories vary in the extent to which they have been tested and verified, as well as their acceptance in the scientific community. For example, heliocentric theory, the theory of evolution, relativity theory and germ theory still bear the name theory even though, in practice, they are considered factual. Philosopher Barry Stroud adds that, although the best definition for knowledge is contested, being skeptical and entertaining the possibility that one is incorrect is compatible with being correct. Ironically then, the scientists adhering to proper scientific approaches will doubt themselves even once they possess the truth. The fallibilist C.S. Pierce argued that inquiry is the struggle to resolve actual doubt and that merely quarrelsome, verbal, or hyperbolic doubt is fruitless but also that the inquirer should try to attain genuine doubt rather than resting uncritically on common sense. He held that the successful sciences trust, not to any single chain of inference, no stronger than its weakest link, but to the cable of multiple and various arguments intimately connected. Stanovich also asserts that science avoids searching for a magic bullet, it avoids the single cause fallacy. This means a scientist would not ask merely what is the cause of, but rather what are the most significant causes of. This is especially the case in the more macroscopic fields of science, e.g. psychology, cosmology, .141-147 of course, research often analyzes few factors at once, but these are always added to the long list of factors that are most important to consider 141-147 for example, knowing the details of only a person's genetics, or their history and upbringing, or the current situation may not explain a behavior, but a deep understanding of all these variables combined can be very predictive. Fringe science, pseudoscience, and junk science. An area of study or speculation that masquerades as science in an attempt to claim a legitimacy that it would not otherwise be able to achieve is sometimes referred to as pseudoscience, fringe science, or junk science. Physicist Richard Feynman coined the term cargo cult science for cases in which researchers believe they are doing science because their activities have the outward appearance of science but actually lack the kind of utter honesty that allows their results to be rigorously evaluated. Various types of commercial advertising, ranging from hype to fraud, may fall into these categories. There also can be discussed an element of political or ideological bias on all sides of scientific debates. Sometimes, research may be characterized as bad science, research that may be well-intentioned but is actually incorrect, obsolete, incomplete, or oversimplified expositions of scientific ideas. The term scientific misconduct refers to situations such as where researchers have intentionally misrepresented their published data or have purposely given credit for a discovery to the wrong person. Scientific Practice Astronomy became much more accurate after Tycho Ubra devised his scientific instruments for measuring angles between two celestial bodies, before the invention of the telescope. Bra's observations were the basis for Kepler's laws. Although encyclopedias such as Pliny, Fluid 77 AD, Natural History offered purported fact, they proved unreliable. A skeptical point of view, demanding a method of proof, was the practical position taken to deal with unreliable knowledge. As early as 1000 years ago, scholars such as Alhazen, doubts concerning Ptolemy, Roger Bacon, Whitelow, John Pesham, Francis Bacon, 1605, and C. S. Pears, 1839-1914, provided the community to address these points of uncertainty. In particular, fallacious reasoning can be exposed, such as affirming the consequent. If a man will begin with certainties, he shall end in doubts, but if he will be content to begin with doubts, he shall end in certainties. Francis Bacon, 
1605, The Advancement of Learning, Book 1, v. 8. The methods of inquiry into a problem have been known for thousands of years, and extend beyond theory to practice. The use of measurements, for example, is a practical approach to settle disputes in the community. A repeatable experiment for newborn babies, showing their facility for imitation. John Zeman points out that intersubjective pattern recognition is fundamental to the creation of all scientific knowledge. P44 Zeman shows how scientists can identify patterns to each other across centuries. Zeman refers to this ability as perceptual consensibility. P46 Zeman then makes consensibility, leading to consensus, the touchstone of reliable knowledge. P104 The Scientific Method Main Article Scientific Method the scientific method seeks to explain the events of nature in a reproducible way. An explanatory thought experiment or hypothesis is put forward, as explanation, using principles such as parsimony, also known as Occam's razor, and are generally expected to seek consilience fitting well with other accepted facts related to the phenomena. This new explanation is used to make falsifiable predictions that are testable by experiment or observation. The predictions are to be posted before a confirming experiment or observation is sought, as proof that no tampering has occurred. Disproof of a prediction is evidence of progress. This is done partly through observation of natural phenomena, but also through experimentation, that tries to simulate natural events under controlled conditions, as appropriate to the discipline, in the observational sciences, such as astronomy or geology, a predicted observation might take the place of a controlled experiment. Experimentation is especially important in science to help establish causal relationships, to avoid the correlation fallacy. Isaac Newton, shown here in a 1689 portrait, made seminal contributions to classical mechanics, gravity, and optics. Newton shares credit with Gottfried Leibniz for the development of calculus. When a hypothesis proves unsatisfactory, it is either modified or discarded. If the hypothesis survived testing, it may become adopted into the framework of a scientific theory. This is a logically reasoned, self-consistent model or framework for describing the behavior of certain natural phenomena. A theory typically describes the behavior of much broader sets of phenomena than a hypothesis, commonly, a large number of hypotheses can be logically bound together by a single theory. Thus a theory is a hypothesis explaining various other hypotheses. In that vein, theories are formulated according to most of the same scientific principles as hypotheses. In addition to testing hypotheses, scientists may also generate a model based on observed phenomena. This is an attempt to describe or depict the phenomenon in terms of a logical, physical, or mathematical representation and to generate new hypotheses that can be tested. While performing experiments to test hypotheses, scientists may have a preference for one outcome over another, and so it is important to ensure that science as a whole can eliminate this bias. This can be achieved by careful experimental design, transparency, and a thorough peer review process of the experimental results as well as any conclusions. After the results of an experiment are announced or published, it is normal practice for independent researchers to double-check how the research was performed, and to follow up by performing similar experiments to determine how dependable the results might be. Taken in its entirety, the scientific method allows for highly creative problem solving while minimizing any effects of subjective bias on the part of its users, namely the confirmation bias. Mathematics and Formal Sciences Main Article, Mathematics Mathematics is essential to the sciences. One important function of mathematics in science is the role it plays in the expression of scientific models. Observing and collecting measurements, as well as hypothesizing and predicting, often require extensive use of mathematics. Arithmetic, algebra, geometry, trigonometry, and calculus, for example, are all essential to physics. Virtually every branch of mathematics has applications in science, including pure areas such as number theory and topology. Statistical methods, which are mathematical techniques for summarizing and analyzing data, 
allows scientists to assess the level of reliability and the range of variation in experimental results. Statistical analysis plays a fundamental role in many areas of both the natural sciences and social sciences. Computational science applies computing power to simulate real-world situations, enabling a better understanding of scientific problems than formal mathematics alone can achieve. According to the Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics, computation is now as important as theory and experiment in advancing scientific knowledge. Whether mathematics itself is properly classified as science has been a matter of some debate. Some thinkers see mathematicians as scientists, regarding physical experiments as inessential or mathematical proofs as equivalent to experiments. Others do not see mathematics as a science, since it does not require an experimental test of its theories and hypotheses. Mathematical theorems and formulas are obtained by logical derivations which presume axiomatic systems, rather than the combination of empirical observation and logical reasoning that has come to be known as the scientific method. In general, mathematics is classified as formal science, while natural and social sciences are classified as empirical sciences. Basic and Applied Research Anthropogenic pollution has an effect on the Earth's environment and climate. Although some scientific research is applied research into specific problems, a great deal of our understanding comes from the curiosity-driven undertaking of basic research. This leads to options for technological advance that were not planned or sometimes even imaginable. This point was made by Michael Faraday when, allegedly in response to the question what is the use of basic research, he responded Sir, what is the use of a newborn child? For example, research into the effects of red light on the human eye's rod cells did not seem to have any practical purpose, eventually, the discovery that our night vision is not troubled by red light would lead search and rescue teams, among others, to adopt red light in the cockpits of jets and helicopters 106110 in a nutshell, basic research is the search for knowledge. Applied research is the search for solutions to practical problems using this knowledge. Finally, even basic research can take unexpected turns, and there is some sense in which the scientific method is built to harness luck. Research in practice Due to the increasing complexity of information and specialization of scientists, most of the cutting-edge research today is done by well-funded groups of scientists, rather than individuals. D.K. Simonton notes that due to the breadth of very precise and far-reaching tools already used by researchers today and the amount of research generated so far, creation of new disciplines or revolutions within a discipline may no longer be possible as it is unlikely that some phenomenon that merits its own discipline has been overlooked. Hybridizing of disciplines and finessing knowledge is, in his view, the future of science. Practical Impacts of Scientific Research Discoveries in fundamental science can be world-changing. For example, Research Impact Static electricity and magnetism, 1600 Electric current, 18th century, all electric appliances, dynamos, electric power stations, modern electronics, including electric lighting, television, electric heating, magnetic tape, loudspeaker, plus the compass and lightning rod. Diffraction, 1665, optics, hence fiber optic cable, 1840s, modern intercontinental communications, and cable TV and internet. Germ theory, 1700, hygiene, leading to decreased transmission of infectious diseases, antibodies, leading to techniques for disease diagnosis and targeted anti-cancer therapies. Vaccination, 1798, leading to the elimination of most infectious diseases from developed countries and the worldwide eradication of smallpox. Photovoltaic effect, 1839, solar cells, 1883, hence solar power, solar powered watches, calculators and other devices. The strange orbit of Mercury, 1859, and other research. Leading to special, 1905, and general relativity, 1916, satellite-based technology such as GPS, 
1973, Satnav and Satellite Communications. Radio Waves, 1887, radio had become used in innumerable ways beyond its better known areas of telephony, and broadcast television, 1927, and radio, 1906, entertainment. Other uses included emergency services, radar, navigation and weather prediction, medicine, astronomy, wireless communications, and networking. Radio waves also led researchers to adjacent frequencies such as microwaves, used worldwide for heating and cooking food. Radioactivity, 1896, and antimatter, 1932, cancer treatment, 1896, radiometric dating, 1905, nuclear reactors, 1942, and weapons, 1945, PET scans, 1961, and medical research, via isotopic labeling. X-rays, 1896, medical imaging, including computed tomography. Crystallography and quantum mechanics, 1900, semiconductor devices, 1906, hence modern computing and telecommunications including the integration with wireless devices, the mobile phone. Plastics, 1907, starting with Bakelite, many types of artificial polymers for numerous applications in industry and daily life. Antibiotics, 1880s, 1928, Salversan, Penicillin, Doxycycline etc. Nuclear Magnetic Resonance, 1930s, Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy, 1946, Magnetic Resonance Imaging, 1971, Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging, 1990s. Scientific Community Main Article, Scientific Community The scientific community is the group of all interacting scientists. It includes many sub-communities working on particular scientific fields, and within particular institutions, interdisciplinary and cross-institutional activities are also significant. Branches and Fields Main Article, Branches of Science The somatosensory system is located throughout our bodies but is integrated in the brain. Scientific fields are commonly divided into two major groups, natural sciences, which study natural phenomena, including biological life, and social sciences, which study human behavior and societies. These groupings are empirical sciences, which means the knowledge must be based on observable phenomena and capable of being tested for its validity by other researchers working under the same conditions. There are also related disciplines that are grouped into interdisciplinary and applied sciences, such as engineering and medicine. Within these categories are specialized scientific fields that can include parts of other scientific disciplines but often possess their own nomenclature and expertise. Mathematics, which is classified as a formal science, has both similarities and differences with the empirical sciences, the natural and social sciences. It is similar to empirical sciences in that it involves an objective, careful and systematic study of an area of knowledge, it is different because of its method of verifying its knowledge, using a priori rather than empirical methods. The formal sciences, which also include statistics and logic, are vital to the empirical sciences. Major advances in formal science have often led to major advances in the empirical sciences. The formal sciences are essential in the formation of hypotheses, theories, and laws, both in discovering and describing how things work, natural sciences, and how people think and act, social sciences. Institutions Learned societies for the communication and promotion of scientific thought and experimentation have existed since the Renaissance period. The oldest surviving institution is the Italian Accademia dei Lincei which was established in 1603. The respective national academies of science are distinguished institutions that exist in a number of countries, beginning with the British Royal Society in 1660 and the French Academy des Sciences in 1666. International scientific organizations, such as the International Council for Science, 
have since been formed to promote cooperation between the scientific communities of different nations. Many governments have dedicated agencies to support scientific research. Prominent scientific organizations include, the National Science Foundation in the U.S., the National Scientific and Technical Research Council in Argentina, the Academies of Science of Many Nations, XRO in Australia, Centre National de la Recherche Scientifique in France, Max Planck Society and Deutsche Forskungsgemeinschaft in Germany, and in Spain, CSIC. Literature Main article, Scientific Literature An enormous range of scientific literature is published. Scientific journals communicate and document the results of research carried out in universities and various other research institutions, serving as an archival record of science. The first scientific journals, Journal des Scavans followed by the Philosophical Transactions, began publication in 1665. Since that time the total number of active periodicals has steadily increased. In 1981, one estimate for the number of scientific and technical journals in publication was 11,500. The United States National Library of Medicine currently indexes 5,516 journals that contain articles on topics related to the life sciences. Although the journals are in 39 languages, 91% of the indexed articles are published in English. Most scientific journals cover a single scientific field and publish the research within that field, the research is normally expressed in the form of a scientific paper. Science has become so pervasive in modern societies that it is generally considered necessary to communicate the achievements, news and ambitions of scientists to a wider populace. Science magazines such as New Scientist, Science and Vi and Scientific American cater to the needs of a much wider readership and provide a non-technical summary of popular areas of research, including notable discoveries and advances in certain fields of research. Science books engage the interest of many more people. Tangentially, the science fiction genre, primarily fantastic in nature, engages the public imagination and transmits the ideas, if not the methods, of science. Recent efforts to intensify or develop links between science and non-scientific disciplines such as literature or, more specifically, poetry, include the creative writing science resource developed through the Royal Literary Fund. Science and Society Women in Science Main article, Women in Science Vera Rubin, the first astronomer to infer galactic clumping from astronomical data in 1953, was not allowed to use the telescope at Palomar until 1965, with the given reason that the facility did not have a women's restroom. Science has traditionally been a male-dominated field, with some notable exceptions. Women historically faced considerable discrimination in science, much as they did in other areas of male-dominated societies, such as frequently being passed over for job opportunities and denied credit for their work. For example, Christine Ladd, 1847-1930, was able to enter a Ph.D. program as C. Ladd, Christine Kitty Ladd completed the requirements in 1882, but was awarded her degree only in 1926, after a career which spanned the algebra of logic, C. Truth Table, Color Vision, and Psychology. Her work preceded notable researchers like Ludwig Wittgenstein and Charles Sanders Peirce. The achievements of women in science have been attributed to their defiance of their traditional role as laborers within the domestic sphere. In the late 20th century, active recruitment of women and elimination of institutional discrimination on the basis of sex greatly increased the number of female scientists, but large gender disparities remain in some fields, over half of new biologists are female, while 80% of PhDs in physics are given to men. Feminists claim this is the result of culture rather than an innate difference between the sexes, and some experiments have shown that parents challenge and explain more to boys than girls, asking them to reflect more deeply and logically. In the early part of the 21st century, in America, women earned 50.3% bachelor's degrees, 45.6% master's degrees, and 40.7% of PhDs in science and engineering fields with women earning more than half of the degrees in three fields, 
psychology, about 70%, social sciences, about 50%, and biology, about 50 to 60%. However, when it comes to the physical sciences, geosciences, math, engineering, and computer science, women earned less than half the degrees. However, lifestyle choice also plays a major role in female engagement in science, women with young children are 28% less likely to take tenure-track positions due to work-life balance issues, and female graduate students' interest in careers in research declines dramatically over the course of graduate school, whereas that of their male colleagues remains unchanged. Science Policy Main Articles, Science Policy, History of Science Policy, Funding of Science and Economics of Science Science policy is an area of public policy concerned with the policies that affect the conduct of the scientific enterprise, including research funding, often in pursuance of other national policy goals such as technological innovation to promote commercial product development, weapons development, healthcare, and environmental monitoring. Science policy also refers to the act of applying scientific knowledge and consensus to the development of public policies. Science policy thus deals with the entire domain of issues that involve the natural sciences. In accordance with public policy being concerned about the well-being of its citizens, science policy's goal is to consider how science and technology can best serve the public. State policy has influenced the funding of public works and science for thousands of years, dating at least from the time of the Mahists, who inspired the study of logic during the period of the Hundred Schools of Thought, and the study of defensive fortifications during the Warring States period in China. In Great Britain, governmental approval of the Royal Society in the 17th century recognized a scientific community which exists to this day. The professionalization of science, begun in the 19th century, was partly enabled by the creation of scientific organizations such as the National Academy of Sciences, the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, and state funding of universities of their respective nations. Public policy can directly affect the funding of capital equipment, intellectual infrastructure for industrial research, by providing tax incentives to those organizations that fund research. Van Evar Bush, Director of the Office of Scientific Research and Development for the United States Government, the forerunner of the National Science Foundation, wrote in July 1945 that science is a proper concern of government. Science and technology research is often funded through a competitive process, in which potential research projects are evaluated and only the most promising receive funding. Such processes, which are run by government, corporations, or foundations, allocate scarce funds. Total research funding in most developed countries is between 1.5% and 3% of GDP. In the OECD, around two-thirds of research and development in scientific and technical fields is carried out by industry, and 20% and 10% respectively by universities and government. The government funding proportion in certain industries is higher, and it dominates research in social science and humanities. Similarly, with some exceptions, e.g. biotechnology, government provides the bulk of the funds for basic scientific research. In commercial research and development, all but the most research-oriented corporations focus more heavily on near-term commercialization possibilities rather than blue-sky ideas or technologies, such as nuclear fusion. Media Perspectives The mass media face a number of pressures that can prevent them from accurately depicting competing scientific claims in terms of their credibility within the scientific community as a whole. Determining how much weight to give different sides in a scientific debate may require considerable expertise regarding the matter. Few journalists have real scientific knowledge, and even beat reporters who know a great deal about certain scientific issues may be ignorant about other scientific issues that they are suddenly asked to cover. Political Usage See also, Politicization of Science Many issues damage the relationship of science to the media and the use of science and scientific arguments by politicians. As a very broad generalization, many politicians seek certainties and facts whilst scientists typically offer probabilities and caveats. However, 
politicians' ability to be heard in the mass media frequently distorts the scientific understanding by the public examples in Britain include the controversy over the MMR inoculation, and the 1988 forced resignation of a government minister, Edwina Curry for revealing the high probability that battery-farmed eggs were contaminated with salmonella. John Horgan, Chris Mooney, and researchers from the US and Canada have described scientific certainty argumentation methods, scams, where an organization or think tank makes it their only goal to cast doubt on supported science because it conflicts with political agendas. Hank Campbell and microbiologist Alex Barrazzo have described feel-good fallacies used in politics, where politicians frame their positions in a way that makes people feel good about supporting certain policies even when scientific evidence shows there is no need to worry or there is no need for dramatic change on current programs. Science and the Public Various activities are developed to approximate the general public and science-slash-scientists, such as in science outreach, public awareness of science, science communication, science festivals, citizen science, science journalism, public science, popular science, etc., see science and the public for related concepts. Science is represented by the S in STEM fields.